account. Now we uploaded these last time just so we can see the process. We're gonna see our deposits coming in and it's probably gonna have some kind of description that's gonna be able to tell us because it's an electronic payment that it came from the Shopify pay. What it's not gonna tell us is, is all the customers that, that bought stuff, right? I don't have that detail. I have that detail over here because I can look at each of these individual transactions and see what was purchased. When I bring it over here under this journal entry method, I'm not, I'm not adding all that detail either on the journal entry or when we make the banking payments, we're just trying to make our financial statements as detailed as we can. We're not trying to get the detail on the customer level, breaking up the customers uh, because all of that kind of stuff is on the Shopify side and we probably don't need it other than adding them to our mailing list or something like that. So if I was to look at this, I could say there's the payment and I would probably want to open up my clearing account right here and just double check to say, okay, does that match something that's in my clearing account? I only have one number at this point. So of course I can see that it does. But if you look at the detail, you could say, okay, that matches. And we should see in our clearing account, the clearing account going up and then going back down periodically being zero in the balance, right? So if I go over and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna post this, this is a deposit, I see it in my clearing account, and I'm just gonna put the other side to the Shopify, Shopify payment clearing account, which is that one. So I'm just gonna, that's gonna reduce this amount, just one of the Shopify payment clearing, yeah. And that's gonna reduce that amount, and I probably don't wanna automate this, this transaction, I just want to probably double check them. All of my deposits from Shopify are going to go to that clearing account. In other words, and you could make a rule, like I could make a rule over here and say all of these Shopify payments according to the description should should be going to that clearing account. Uh, and you could make a rule, uh, but, but then I would say don't auto add it. Instead, I'm just going to double check it because I would like to double check that that number actually matches something that's in the Shopify uh, account over here exactly. Now note that if we did not use the clearing account and we just entered this with the journal entry directly uh, into the, the, the checking account, or if we use like a deposit form to enter the journal, like you could use a deposit form to enter a journal entry, then the matching mechanism would actually find the match possibly. And so that actually might work quite well in uh, this one because this should be exactly tied out. So, but in any case, we'll we'll save it here. So I'm going to say Shopify clearing, and so let's add it and check it out. And so if I go back on over to my balance sheet, my balance sheet, exit, and we say run it. Now we've got the the clearing account for the payments clearing account went back down. So if I see this clearing account, if I go into it, this should be the pattern that I should I should see it should see it going up and then going back down. Where's and I don't where did it go? I think I went into inventory. Let's go into this one. This is the, you got to hit the right zero that one. So then so it goes up with the journal entry and then it goes back down with the deposit form that we created from the bank feeds. And then it's back down to zero. That's what a clearing account means. It's not a temporary account. Those are income statement accounts for the most part because they close out to, to equity. This is a clearing account. All right, I'm gonna exit this one. And then uh, let's do the same thing on the PayPal side. PayPal side, same thing, but PayPal hit us with an added fee. So note there's a, an added little wrinkle on this one. Now, like sometimes PayPal, well, actually, if you use the PayPal integration, you can see it's a little bit different. So PayPal integration will actually break out the fees. So for example, if I look at if I look at this one, uh, it's it has some different options than a normal bank feed. And it's saying, hey, look, there were fees of 766. So it might actually take care of the fees. And it also looks a little bit different that you can make it go to a sales receipt or deposit form than the other uh, bank feeds. So when you use PayPal, you could set it up as like a normal bank feed, <laughs> or you could set up the PayPal integration, which might give you that added bit of detail of those fees. Now I, I use the PayPal integration, but we just uploaded from, 
from an Excel or CSV file. So we don't have that breakout here. So that means that this amount is not going to match out to to exactly the amount that we put in our, our clearing account, right? It's not going to match out exactly to if I go to my clearing account, I'm at here. And if I go here, then I'm at that. And that you would kind of expect that to happen due to the due to the fees, unless again, you have that integration that exactly broke out the fees. So I can I can match this one out and I'm and I can account for the clearing, it's not going to clear out perfectly. So I'm going to say, all right, I can see that matches out and they charged me some fees on it. And uh, so let's say this is going to go not to the Shopify clearing, but to the Shopify PayPal clearing. And it's not going to exactly bring it down to zero because of the fees. So I'm going to say add it. All right. And then if I go back on over to the balance sheet, we're going to say run. And now the 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 pay the PayPal clearing still has five dollars and fifty five cents in it. So if I go into that, the clearing account went up with the journal entry, went back down with the deposit, just like the other one, but it left five dollars and fifty five cents. And I can double check that if I want to look at my PayPal stuff, but I can assume that that's going to be fees for PayPal. So I could re I could further reduce my clearing account with a journal entry if I needed if I needed to if it wasn't taken care of by the PayPal integration app. Uh, so and then the other side went into my PayPal bank account, which is moved it up to the bank account. So that's how those clearing accounts work. So let's do that last journal entry. I'm just going to say, all right, let's just journal internalize journal journal journalize it out of the 555 that last bit. So I'm going to take the 555 out and I'm going to say, let's go plus new journal entry. Boom. And I'm going to say that it's going to go into charge. What do they call it? Something like Shopify, Shopify fees, Shopify fees. Let's just say fees, <laughs> PayPal fees. I have a PayPal fees. Let's do that one. Uh, so that should be an expense form and it's going to be 5.55. And is that how much it should be? Yes. And then the other side is going to go to the PayPal clearing account 5.55. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that. So we'll say save and close. And then if I go back to my balance sheet and run it, that clearing account should go back down to zero. So the Shopify PayPal clearing back to zero. And then I'm going to go back on up and exit. And my income statement now has the fees and charges. It's probably nice to break out. Notice in this method, you can break out your fees for the PayPal fees versus the Shopify fees and other kinds of fees. And that might help you manage what best practices are for uh, your business. So the bottom line is our, our bottom line is 163343. And that should match your 163343. But now we have more detail on the income and expenses. Let's compare that if I bring this up to November 11, 325 and I run this side by side month by month comparison on on the income statement you could see you could see what we did on the other method which was just waiting till it hits the bank right when I waited till it hit the bank uh, we just recorded you know everything in uh, in Shopify sales I think we weren't breaking out this or this and we just waited till it hit the bank and then we made a journal entry adjusting for the fees, like us, like imagining we're matching it out to the to the 1099. So this, you know, gives us a little bit more detail. It's a fairly basic example of it, but it breaks out a bit more detail than simply waiting till something clears the bank in order to record it. And also, what we'll talk about uh, in future presentations is the integrations which could include like an integration for the commerce integrations that are actually in QuickBooks now, which does a similar thing as this journal.